Yo. Don't go it on me now. Be strong. Be strong. Because I haven't actually just sat down and talked with you in a while. Been busy in Australia. Got back, went straight to the bigger movie premiere that happened in Vegas. And just kind of everything's been like, like in Zoolander. That's how I feel right now. I feel like I just haven't had a minute to sit down and talk and kind of give you guys um, my thoughts on the Olympia. Um, you know, and then also more or less just a life update because a lot of things have happened. I've been seeing a lot of questions obviously on YouTube and also on social media. Um, and I'm in LA right now in pretty much the home, my home park. So this is where I lived in LA when I lived here. I love this area and I thought what, what better than to sit down in the California sun with the cop sirens going and talk to you guys a little bit about everything. So first and foremost, the bigger premiere, so cool to see the fitness world mesh with the Hollywood world. And you know, it was, it was a cool story. It was a story all about Joe Weider. The man who created the Mr. Olympia, the father of bodybuilding, Joe Weider. So don't go into it thinking it's gonna be a bodybuilding movie. There are obviously bodybuilders, historical bodybuilders in it, like Arnold played by Callum Moger. He killed it. My dude Callum killed it. My man Cal. What's going on? I'm literally in the movie for like three seconds. If you blink, you're gonna miss me. Um, but I had a super cool opportunity. You know, my, my part was lifting Julianne, uh, Julianne Hugh, Julianne Huff. Sorry, I thought that was a bee, it was a bubble. Uh, my, my part was lifting Julianne Huff up. Um, we're doing a, a shoot on the beach. So yeah, super cool. I was actually here in town with her, with her husband working out today, Brooks Like. Such a cool dude. So that video is to come. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But, you know, Olympia weekend, I didn't even stick around for the weekend. I, I went to the movie premiere and then I bounced. The movie comes out October 12th, but a lot of people were asking me about, Steve, what did you think about the Olympia this go around? And, you know, what, what do you think about the sport, men's physique, classic bodybuilding, um, obviously in men's bodybuilding. So starting with men's bodybuilding, I was so excited. Sean Roden looked amazing. I think he has a little bit better uh, of a streamlined physique then then now feels obviously great feels incredible I wouldn't be surprised to see Phil come back and win it I think Sean though this is obviously the best he ever came in and I used to see Sean all the time just down the street at Gold's Gym working his butt off so huge congratulations to him I think he has his midsection his core is hard to beat um, and I think he was just a little bit sharper so I think that's why he got the win and, and more power to him um, Flex Lewis in the 212 category Flex brought it, and it's his last one ever. So I think Flex, you know, went out on top. Such a class, such a gentleman. Hats off to Flex Lewis for everything he's done for the sport of bodybuilding. Um, will he ever come back? I don't, you know, I don't know. He doesn't have to. He's definitely accomplished all that he's ever needed to accomplish and more. So Flex, whatever you move on and do, I'm sure you'll be great at it. Uh, and then moving on to the classic division. So the classic division, I think, is super cool. Classic division. In, in men's classic bodybuilding, or sorry, classic physique, I should call it. They, they wear trunks that are probably, you know, eight inches long. So you show quad and the physiques are unreal. Just such great physiques. Um, I am obviously partial to, I, I love Chris Bumstead. Besides being a Gymshark athlete that I just found out about like two weeks ago, um, he's also just has incredible symmetry and then does that vacuum pose just but there's so many good physiques in that category the one thing I love about that division is that there's a height to weight ratio so based upon how tall you are there is <clears throat> there's a weight limit that you can't go over so for me I think if I stepped on stage in the pro I could be up to like 224 pounds which is insane that's like 15 pounds more than I've ever weighed on stage that would be a ton of muscle for me but I think it's a super cool category because they pose well uh, and you know it's it's like you know classic golden era of bodybuilding type physiques and that which is something I really really like um, moving on to men's physique obviously men's physique is what I competed in and usually what I'm most opinionated about so men's physique um, saw a new newly crowned champion Jeremy Bundy I think one of the last four years I know he won it uh, one of the years I competed Mark Anthony won it the first year, 
And I think, you know, the men's physique to me has always been kind of this, it's a very popular category, but it's still kind of been like, they don't know exactly what they want. So when I first got into men's physique, the judging criteria said they were gonna judge on face, that being overly muscular or overly lean and grainy, they were gonna mark down on. And that just has not been the case in years past. It's been bigger and bigger and bigger physiques. Brandon Hendricks, the guy who won, phenomenal physique. I'm not taking anything away from him, but he's a big dude. So big that I would wonder if he would actually make weight in his classic physique division. He's a big boy and I've heard there's a lot of people that compete in men's physique that would have to lose eight, 10, 11, 12 pounds to compete in classic division. So if the IFBB, I think, wants to keep that, that men's physique division where it, it should be, they need to have height to weight restrictions as well. It'd be super easy. They're already doing it for the classic physique. Just do it. Do it already for men's physique and you're gonna have a better category. Um, that being said, Ryan Terry, who got third. I think Ryan has personified men's physique for the last two, three years. Tight midsection. Um, he's not overly massive. Always comes in super duper sharp. Has the face, moves well. And to me, he's he's always been like, you know, he's, he's someone that I've wanted to see win it every year for the last three years. Pretty much since I've competed, I've wanted Ryan to win it. So, um, will I get back on stage this year? You know, I'm throwing it up in the air. I'm not gonna say no, but I don't have any immediate plans to. Um, it's a lot of work, dieting and, and getting ready for a show. It's selfish. Um, you learn so much about your body, but it's all about you. It's all about the foods you eat, the timing, when you're working out, how much sleep you're getting. And my life right now, you know, I'm, I'm crazy, I'm busy traveling. So kind of transitioning to my life and my life update. Um, you know, the big question everyone's been asking me is, Steve, did you and Courtney break up? Yes, unfortunately, we did break up. Um, it was a long, you know, it was a hard, Courtney's one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. She's super sweet, um, super nice. And I thought, you know, moving to St. George, she moved with me and, um, you know, not wanting to get too deep into it, but, you know, she deserves nothing but the best. And, uh, you know, I did allow, I, I wanted her to take Poppy with her when she moved back to Arizona. I loved Poppy more than anything in the world. Um, she was my baby, but, you know, I had a support system in St. George. I had my sister, I have friends, I have family. Courtney just had the people that I introduced her to. So she was kind of starting over and, and needed that the dog in her life needed little Poppy to kind of give her some some form of, of comfort going through all of this and you know it, it, it's not to say that anything happened you know there's no cheating no anything like that it just was one of those things that um, you know it is what it is and you know nothing but the best for Courtney she's gonna find somebody who's phenomenal and you know, I think that that's all you could ever hope for for yourself and for anyone that you've ever cared about is that they have, you know, good healthy relationships that, and they find that love in their life. So nothing but positive energy. And I feel like you know, me mentally, I'm in a good place right now. And traveling around the world, being out here, doing things, getting back really into enjoying the workouts again. All of it's so so fun. So we're gonna have a lot of amazing content coming your guys' way. Hopefully, this has answered some of your guys' questions that you've been asking me. And it's just super duper fun to be back on YouTube chatting with you guys and being transparent. You know, uh, I, I didn't want to talk about anything that I wasn't ready to talk about. And I kind of wanted just time to process things. And not that I, you know, not that I ever think anyone that lives their life on social media or, you know, like, like I do or like Courtney does or like so many people out there, you don't have to share things. And, you know, we share as much as we want. And really, there's nothing more to share other than the fact that. You know, she's in Arizona, I'm in Utah, um, wish her the best, and you know, a lot of great content coming out, and I'll be in Toronto with Gymshark starting October 10th, um, we're there through that weekend, so it'll be super fun, if you're in that Canada, if you're from Canada, if you're Canadian, in that Toronto area, even if you're from the US and you're close to Toronto, come check it out, we'll have fun, leave a comment on this video of some of the, the content you guys want to see coming, or who maybe we should collab with, and then like the thumb button, like the like the thumbs up button just for transparency in life. So um, appreciate you guys and we'll see you next time.